The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. So, all right. Um, so, this is a 2-3 tree. So, as you can see, uh, every node has, so the 2-3 is either two children or three children. Every node can have either one key or two keys. And the, the correlation is that every, uh, for, so if there are n keys in a node, it has n plus one children. So the way that works is, well, in a similar, similar to binary search tree, right? So if you have value here, the two children surrounding it, so this side is less, this side is more. So it's essentially in sorted order going in an in order reversal. So left, left child, root, right child. So in order, it's sorted. So generally, a B tree will have some nodes, uh, so let's say n and n plus one children. And if you take anything in the middle, look at the two children, all the keys in this subtree are smaller than the key here, and all the C trees keys in this subtree are larger than the key here. So that's the general node. OK, so uh, before we go into more details of the like, properties and everything, so the question is, why use B trees? So let's, like, if we do a quick uh, depth analysis, we can see that the depth is still log n, right? Is that clear to everyone, sort of, why the depth is log n? Because you have, you have branching just, in B, just in, like in binary search trees. In fact, you have more branching. But in any case, the depth is still log n. But why use B trees over? Uh, binary search trees. Any other reason why you would prefer to use B trees and not? So, like all the operations still log in. Any guesses? None? Okay. Well, okay, the reason is well, memory hierarchy. So, in normally in algorithms, we just assume that. The computer has access to like memory, and you can just like pick up things from disk and constant time, and do your operations with it. And you don't worry about caches and everything. But that's not how computers work, right? So in a computer, you have so those of you who have taken like some computer architecture class, six double four or something, you will know so that hierarchy. So there's a CPU. So let's try it somewhere. Uh, so you have your CPU, and near your CPU you have some registers. You have your caches, L1, L2, L3, whatever. You have your RAM. You have disk after that. So disk is the slowest. Then you have your, I don't know, your cloud, and whatever. So like each level, your memory size grows and your access time grows as well. So in the basic memory hierarchy model, we have just two levels of hierarchy, let's say. So you have cache, connected by a high bandwidth channel to the CPU. And you have a low bandwidth channel to disk. So the difference is so essentially you can consider that cache to have like infinite speed. Cache just like you whatever you can take it. You don't have any cost for bringing in stuff from cache. So, but it, but it's finite size. So the way cache works is it has a bunch of words. It has a finite finite number of words. So it's each each word has size uh, size b. And let's say you have m words. However, hard disk is just let's say infinite memory, but it has some some cost associated to uh, Accessing things. Okay. Also, when you access things from hard disk, you copy them into cache, and you copy a block of size b. You take it up from the hard disk, and you try, like you take a block and you put it into cache, and you have to get rid of something because it's finite. So what you want to do is you want to utilize those that that b block efficiently. You, you, you don't just want to like bring a b block every time you want to access a new node. In a binary search tree, like normal operations are what you start at the root, go to a node. So, but that's not very easily correlated with this, right? So if you want to utilize the entire block, you would want something like a block which sort of goes down the tree. But that's, but that's not how binary trees are stored. Binary trees are stored this way. So that's the nice thing about B, tree, B trees. So since you can make, so this is just a two, three tree. This is not a general B tree. A general B tree will have a bunch of nodes. And we'll come to that number. But generally, you want to make that number of nodes something like, the uh, cache, what is the cache, the word size in the cache. 
So once you do that, you can get an entire node from disk, like work on that, and then like get another entire node. So like your height is reduced, and you can do your operations much quicker because you don't are not accessing ev accessing disk every time you're going down a level. I mean, you are sorry, you are accessing disk every time you go down a level, but you're get like you're utilizing the whole block when you're accessing disk. Good, sort of makes sense. Okay. So let's write down the specifications for a B for B trees now. Mm. All right. So yes, good. So so number of children. So okay, first of all, a B tree has something called a, a branching factor. So in the two three tree, the branching factor is two. So what that means is simply it's a, it just bounds the number of children. So the number of children has to be greater than or equal to two. Other than the root node, the root node can have less than b children. It's fine. Also, it's upper bounded by two b plus one, two b. Uh, notice that this is a strict upper bound, so you can have at most two b minus one keys in the uh, children from a node. Also, remember that the number of keys, the number of keys is one. This just one less than the number of children. Therefore. These inequalities, oh, that's, that's not right. There we go. Uh, these inequalities just get reduced by 1. So you have 1 minus 1, and you have 2b minus 1. So the number of keys can be between b minus 1 and 2b minus 2. The rationale for that will become clear. Oh, yeah, is the height of the tree? No, b is the branching, so uh, b, b is the branching factor. So that is the number of children. Like, it's not a number of children, right? It's, the, it's a bound on the number of children. So like in the 2, 3 tree, so b is equal to 2, and this is a 2, 3, 3. So the 2 refers to, you can have either 2 children, or you can have 3 children. So, and so the, here, the, the, the upper bound in children is 2b minus 1, right? 2b minus 1 is equal to 3. So you can have either, either 2 or 3 children. And correspondingly, you can have either 1, or two keys in the node. Make sense? Cool. OK. So coming back to this. So the root does not have the, have the lower bound. The root can have one child in any tree. So you have a uh, b equal to 5 tree. The root can still have one child. Uh, sorry, uh, not one child. One key element, two children. All right. That's good. Also, it's completely balanced. So all the leaves are the same depth. So, like you can, so you can see it here, right? So all the, so you don't, you, you can't have like a dangling, dangling node here. This is not allowed. You have to have a leaf. You have to have something going down, and everything ends at the same level. All right. So that's the thing. So also the leaves obviously don't have children. So the this this condition is uh, violated by the leaf. Okay. All right. So the, that's the basic structure of a B tree. Uh, now. So the first operation we'll consider on B trees is searching. So that should be relatively straightforward, right? So remember how searching is done in the binary search tree. You bring in a value x, compare it to the key. Let's say x is less than k. You go down this path. Let's say x is greater than k. You go down this path. So similarly in a B tree. So let's say you bring in a value. Let's say you are looking for 20. So you bring in 20, compare it to this. 20 is less than 30, so go down here. Now you have three values, uh, sorry, two values. So where does 20 fit in here? Not here, not here, it fits here. OK, go down this tree. You find 20, that's it. So in general, you f bring in a k, key k, you look at this node, and you go through all the values. So uh, something I forgot to mention, So which should be clear, all the, val all the keys in a the node, they're sorted, one after the other. So you're Values go like this, so they're increasing in this way. Make sense? Okay, so so you bring in a key, look at all the keys in the node you're looking at, 
pick the one, pick the place where k fits in. I, I, unless it's already in the node, then you're done. You, you found it. Otherwise, let's say the k fits in between these two, these two guys. So you go down this child and continue. So searching is log n, similar to BSTs. Okay. Okay. So searching is not very interesting. So let's see. So next is insertion. So insertion is a little more just interesting than searching. So what you do in insertion is you. Oh. Okay. Well, I guess we start we start run again. Okay. Uh, well, should we move back to the original room? Okay. Let's let's do that. So before we resume, does anyone have any questions about the structure of B trees? We rushed through that quite a lot, quite, quite fast. So about how B trees are structured, everyone good with that? Okay. Also, any questions about searching in a B tree or a BST or other? Uh, go ahead. Just a random question. So the thirty-eight there, mm -hmm. they can only have two children. Yep. Yeah. So one value, two children. So like. So like whatever is so you have some node in the B tree, yeah. and whatever is below it is split into parts by the elements. So if you have n elements, it split, splits it up into n, sec n plus one segments. So, okay. All right. Yeah. You, said, you said that the root didn't have to follow the root. No. Why? Well, you'll see when we do insertion and deletion why that's necessary. But like, essentially, like you can consider that it's an invariant, and all we have to do is preserve that invariant. So yeah. The root can have has to, it has to still have less than two. It, it still has to have the upper bound, but it it doesn't need to have lower bound. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Hmm? How do you choose b? Uh, with well, the whole interlude with the cache size. So something something with that. So like you probably want two b to b about your cache size, okay. so you can get the whole block in one go. Okay. I don't. I've never implemented the b tree, so I, <laughs> I I don't know how it's actually done in practice. But that is the reason. So I'm, so I'm assuming it's something to do with the okay. cache length. Cool. Well, it's not a child of either. It's a child of this node. So this node has two elements. So it's being divided, dividing the interval up into three sec three parts. So it's a child. It's, it's in between ten and seventeen. Is the point here? So then this this node has, has five children. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, it has three children. So f uh, don't think of every key as a node. Think of like the whole the whole unit as a node. Okay. So like it, it's not so in a binary search tree you have. One element, but here, here every node has multiple elements. That's the point of it. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, let's start with searching. So, let's leave this here. Oh, well. Well, you have the formulas up there, so that's good. <laughs> So, insertion. Let's start with insertion. We already did searching. Okay. So, insertion is you bring in a new key k and you want to insert it into the tree. So, what's the problem that could happen? You can find the location where you want to insert it, just like searching, right? You just go down the tree and find where it should be placed. But once you do place it, you will have a problem. What is the problem? The problem is that one of your nodes will become overflow. And that's not what you are. Well, whatever it, it'll overflow, and that's not what you want. So you want some you want some way so you can manage that. So how do you manage that? So I have this lovely prop here, which I can, I'll hope to demonstrate. Is that, yeah, that's all. Okay. So so here we have b equal to four. So let's first figure out the so number of keys. So what is the minimum number of keys, anyone, for b equal to 4? 3, precisely. So what is the maximum number of keys? Three, 4 into 2 minus 2, yeah, correct. 3, 4, 5, 6. It's not 7. It's, uh, there's a strictly less than sign somewhere. Yes. 
and you'll see why it's not seven in a bit. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> hypocritical of me. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So some insertion happened. Uh, is, are the, is the writing clear? Can everyone read the numbers? Good. Okay. The forty-nine looks a little skewed. Anyway, essentially these are all sorted. This is the parent node. Doesn't matter what's over here. All that matters is eight fifty-six and blah, and whatever is in between. Okay. Um, now, so what we do when we have an overfull node is what something what's called a split operation. So split. And there's something which is called a merge, which we'll come to later when we're doing deletion. But now, so split is very, very intuitively, it splits the node into two parts. So what it does is when you have an overfull node, so the number of elements here is what? 2b minus 1, which is just 1 over the max. So what you do is you take the middle element and remove it. And now you split the node into two parts. Ob observe that there are three here and three here, which is perfect. And now what you do with the middle node, so now you have actually disrupted the structure of the tree. Because there was one pointer going in, there was one child, and now you have two children. So somehow you need to adjust the parent node, because the parent node had only one child. Well, at least like, there are other children off to the side. But here it only had only one child, and now it's split apart. So you do something very simple. You just insert this guy in here. And then you say, oh, this point's here, and this point's here. Make sense? I'm going to get rid of these two. OK? So, and like you can convince yourself that this preserves all the nice properties. So your children have, are being, have nicely fallen back into their interval. Your sequence is completely correct because this was the middle element of this. So this divides this interval properly. This is also between 8 and 56 because this was in this node. So, so all the properties. But there's one property that is a problem. So you've just increased the size of the parent node by 1. So now it's possible that the parent node has overflowed. So what do you do? You split it again. And you split it again. And if, you, if at any point you're fine, you look, you look at the parent node and go, oh, OK, that's fine. That's, that's in the range. But every time it overflows, you can keep going. And how many times can you do this? You can do this all the way up to the root. And when you reach the root, you either it's fine, or the root is too big. It's reached to 2b minus 1. And then you split the root, and you get one singleton node up there. So that, in answer to your question, that is why you need that property in some sense. Not a very convincing argument, but sort of. But anyway, so let's actually do an insertion in this tree we have here. So we are going to insert 16. So 16 comes in here. It's less than 30. Goes to the left. It's between 10 and 17. Goes in the middle. 16. And it's greater than 14. So we add 16 here. Oh, wait, no. Oh, no wait. Oops, sorry. Just a second. Yeah. OK, no, that's good. Yeah. All right, that seems good. Every, all the property is fine. This is still has two elements, which is the maximum, but it's, it's good. It doesn't overflow. OK, uh, let's insert something else. Let's insert 2. So 2 goes to 30, goes down, goes down, and we have a problem, because 2 has overflowed this node. So we split. And the way we split is we take the middle element. So we split the node here. Good. And 3 goes up to the parent. So 3 goes here. And all good, except for the parent is overflowed. So what do we do with the parent? Well, we split the parent again. And this time I split it down the middle. The 10 goes up. So OK, let's get rid of this. Yeah. So now that we split the parent, the 10 goes up here. And you're good. It's a bit fluttered, so let me reposition the 17. OK. 
did those two operations make sense? Questions? If you're yeah, uh, so just pick, just pick the, first of all, okay. If the way we are doing it, when your node is overflowing, so you're inserting only one thing at a time, right? Yeah. So if your node is overflowing, it'll be 2t minus 1, okay. which is an odd number always. There, are, there might be a case where you get an even number if you do something weird. Maybe you have it like, there are like different ways to do B trees, but if it does, you can probably pick the one, like any, either of them, and then the split will similar. I'm not sure about that. I'll look into it. But in general, if you're doing it this way, it'll al it's always odd. So you don't have to worry about that. Good. Anything else? Yeah. So uh, what you would do is that root would have two children, one one element and two children, which is fine because we didn't put that restriction on the root. Okay, that's good. Are we doing on time? Okay, we have some time. All right. Le let's jump into deletion unless anyone else has questions. Uh, so so what? Oh yeah. Oh, that's good. Thank you. So you are going down to the leaves at most, like at most of the leaves once, and you're going back up once. So it's like log n plus log n. And you're good. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, let's do deletion. Okay. So deletion is more complicated. So the reason is I'll be clear. So what the problem in deletion will be: remove a node, and a node is now under full. So it's it has less than b minus one uh, keys in it suddenly. So let's turn this around. There we go. Is that okay, good. So again, b equal to 4. This node is the problem. Only two things in it. So what do we do? Okay. So before we go into that, let's make this assumption that, okay, so okay, there are two steps to deletion. The first step is making the deletion out of leaf. How do you do that? So the way you make the deletion of the leaf is, let's say, you have, have a key, you come down, you buy a you know, B tree, and you're at a node. Now this node, you realize, oh, this key needs to be deleted. But it's not the leaf. So what do you do? So you, essentially, what you do is, you look at these two subtrees, right? So it might have only one subtree. If it's at the end, it'll have only one. Actually, no, that's not true. Never mind. Ignore that. If it's not a leaf, it has two subtrees. So either take the rightmost element in this subtree, which is a leaf, because you can always keep going down right, 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 till you get your leaf. Or the leftmost element in this subtree. So that is ju just the next element after this guy. So you delete this, and you bring this up to here. We'll do an example of this, and you'll, it'll be clearer. But you, so you take either the rightmost element in the left subtree, or the leftmost element in the right subtree, and bring it up here. So you sort of like move the deletion to the leaf. And now it's easier to deal with. So we will come to that. Also, just, uh, just, a, mm, uh, just note that this is not what is done in the recitation. This, so this algorithm for deletion, I think, is not done in the recitation notes. This is a different thing, which I'll send out a link for later. But I believe it works, because well, I got it from the, I'll tell you a reference. OK. So once you move to the leaf, so now let's, let, let's look at this. So this is a node that is under full. And you want to fix it. So how do you fix it? So what do you do is you look at its siblings. So in this case, it has one sibling. It can have up to two siblings. It can have either the left or the right. Okay. So what do you do is you look at a sibling, and this sibling is actually one over the minimum. And if it's one over the minimum, then you're then you're it's really easy. All you have to do is take the leftmost thing here, or if the sibling is on this side, take the rightmost thing here. You and look and look at its parent. So you bring the parent down, and you move the sibling up. And there we go. So you basically like tra so you are rotating the thing into place. So you move the parent down into the under full node, and you replace the parent by the leftmost thing here. Everyone see why that preserves everything? Okay. And also, OK, yeah, and the, and the child is also shifted. Make sure you see that. So like the child which was in this subtree is now in this subtree. All right. But then you can have the situation where you don't have a nice sibling to take care of your problems. So 
in like this scenario, this sibling is like barely full. It has three things in it and it can't donate anything to you. So what do you do in that case? So then you do something which is a parallel of the split operation. You do a merge. So what do you have? So here you have b minus 2. And here you have, well, b minus 1. And you get 2b minus 3. Well, you get another element. You also take the parent. So how you do the merge? I'm just going to show you the merge first. So the way you do it is you move the parent down and you merge these two. Oop. Seems okay? So you move the parent node down, merge these two. And well, now this comes together. And this points into the new node. Sort of clear? What's going on? Questions? Well, so you have discre yeah, exactly. So you have, dec you have decreased the size of the parent, so it might not be under four. So you pro propagate. Anything else? Wait, so are these all different techniques for So there are two cases, right? So either you have a sibling which has extra nodes to donate to you, or you don't. If you don't, then you have to do this. If you case? What about that case? Or is that just like? No, that, that, that is moving it down to the leaf. Oh, okay. Once you move the deletion down to the leaf, so here you have, have something now. And now we move it all the way back up. Okay, so there are two cases. So rotation. So okay, l let's do an example. That will make it clearer. How are we doing on time? Five minutes. So right. Okay. So we are going to delete thirty-eight. So thirty-eight is gone. So, but we want to move it down to the leaf. So, let's take an element. Let's say we take forty-one. So we take forty-one move it up here. So 41 is the leftmost thing in the right subtree. So the, this vacancy doesn't really affect anything because this node is still has the right number of things because it's still got, got one thing in it, which is good. So we're fine. So this is now 40. Yes, 48. OK. Let's say we now delete 41. So 41 is gone. So now that 41 is gone, what do you replace for you? What do you replace this blank spot with? Either this or this, right? It just doesn't matter. So let's just do this one for consistency. So you have 48 here. And now you have a problem because you have a blank box. OK. So can you rotate? Yes? No? No. Right? Because sibling has, is, not, is barely full. So what can you do? So well, you merge. And how do you merge? You move the 48 down, and you combine everything. So you have, so this is, this is kind of hard to understand, but this is like a zero element node. Okay. So, so you, when you merge, you have 32, 48, and nothing. So it's just 32 and 48. So what do you do is, so this seems weird, but this is, just another empty node. You've just like propagated the emptiness upwards. Now you take this empty node and you look for its siblings. Again, its sibling is, well, it ha it's, on, it's, almost, it's barely full. So what do you do again? You bring the 30 down and you merge this. So let's do that. So thirty comes down and. There we go. All the prop looks fine. Does that tree look good? Questions about the operation? Yeah, I'm sure it was not clear, but anything? Make sense? Okay, let's let's do a deletion where we can actually do a rotation. So let's go ahead and delete twenty. So you do your searching, go down the tree, you find the twenty. And delete it. It's gone now. Okay. So you're left with just a actually never mind. We have to do another one. So this, this doesn't do anything. You le le you lost the twenty and you're left with the twenty four. It's fine. So now we delete the twenty four. So now that you got rid of the twenty four, you have a blank box here now. But its sibling is not barely full. It has something to donate. So what will it do? So anyone, which 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 elements are going to rotate? 
1570, right? Okay. Cool. So 16 goes up, 17 goes down. And you're done. You're consistent again. Okay. So that was deletion. So those, those are the two cases for deletion. Uh, does that make sense? Everyone? Any questions? Okay. So that's all the topics we were supposed to cover today. Uh, any questions about any of the operations, any of the other topics, lecture, anything?